This is a Dreamcast disc and is for use only on a Dreamcast unit. Playing this disc on a hi-fi or other audio equipment can cause serious damage to its speakers. Dreamcast, up to six billion players. Welcome back to the stage of history. Why don't we play together? Hey, 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 it's time to make some crazy money. Are you ready? Here we go! Please stop this disc now, 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 now. Hello and welcome to episode 15 of the Dreamcast Junkyard Dream Pod. My name is Tom and I am joined, as ever, by my, you know, extremely well-learned co-hosts. Uh, I'm, le- I'm joined by, uh, by Gaz. Hi, Gaz. Well-learned, that's not what I'd describe myself, but hello, folks. Uh, and uh, Caleb. I'm an educated man. <laughs> Indeed. <laughs> With money on my mind. <laughs> And and uh, and Rob. Hello, I am educated. I think. I think. <laughs> you sound quite educated. You sound like you've come from like Eton or uh, like that. <laughs> <laughs> or Harrow. Here it's just. It's just. A, it's a ploy. He's actually from. Uh, I don't know. I, I was going to say some kind of northern town, but I don't want to actually offend anybody. So yeah. we'll leave it on. <laughs> Manchester. That's where me and you are yeah. from. Guys. Well, so that's we'll, it. We can, we can offend our own city. <laughs> Um, guys, we always start by talking about what we've actually bought or played recently. Um, let's uh, jump straight in. Um, Gaz, what about yourself? Uh, I've been buying uh, some uh, Final Fantasy games, the 3DS games of the uh, Fiat Rhythm. Picked up both for less than 20 quid. It's kind of cool. Uh, a good addition to the collection. Been playing mainly um, Xbox One. Um, I've completed, uh, well, completed um, Call of Duty, what's it called? I can't remember what it's called now. Ghost, 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 Ghost. Oh, yeah. Yeah. And I've moved on to uh, Tomb Raider, which was the free game this this week. So oh, I'm uh, gold. Yeah, I'm gold. gold. Yeah, so I've moved yeah. on to that and I'm playing that at the moment. Very, very Ooh. good. So a long stride from the original PS version. Or the yeah, original yeah. Dreamcast version, even. Sorry. But so mainly uh, modern stuff then you've been, you've been playing. Yeah, yeah pretty much, yeah. Uh, what about yourself, Caleb? Okay, so this is... Um... I set up my uh, digital recorder to try to record some Shenmue because I wanted to try out the YouTube, the new streaming thing. And I screwed up. So basically what I did is I ended up playing Shenmue, and it was kind of like a HD high-quality slideshow, basically. (laughs) So it's this really weird stream where I'm talking about the game, and it's basically just HD images. Because I had it hooked up to my uh, Altona HDMI thing so i was running it at like you know 1080 um but it was i I had screwed it up so i was using xsplit and i think i got the settings so that's good as we're playing video games i've been playing don't start together a lot because that uh, that beta is very very fun yeah um and then i uh, ended up going out to a charity uh auction yesterday and i ended up being an entire day because it turns out there's an Apple Festival that happens 15 minutes away from my house. And I've lived here for eight years, and I didn't even realize that. So that, folks, that's why you should leave your apartment No, just to clarify, <laughs> is this like apples as in fruits made into cider or uh, apples yeah, as but in like, there's no, iPhones I, I and iPods? Any, I didn't see many apples. They were doing, like, there were, like, three different places that were doing different barbecue and stuff. And there were, like, a ton of, uh, there were a ton of things happening. So I went to a ton of garage sales there. Super fun. Uh, but yeah, nope. uh, the whole, sh- I'm hoping to do the YouTube streaming thing and get it set up correctly in the near future. Lovely. <laughs> uh, what about you, Rob? Pickups wise, uh, not Dreamcast, I'm afraid, but really cool. I got, uh, the King of Fighters 2003 on MVS, um, oh, wow. which is freaking ace. I got the full kit. Um, it was only double digit price, which was amazing really uh because I had so such difficulty tracking down any sort of affordable even just a cart only like getting any sort of affordable figure was just ridiculous 2003 was the last king of fighters that was made for the neo geo mvs um and aes system and it was the last one the last 2d iteration done by snk or snk playmore who basically poached Loads of the original guys who'd worked on all the other iterations of the game before that, apart from 2001 and 2000, I think. That um, is, uh, so that's, sorry, Rob, I was going to say that is such, that's so late for an MVS game. 
It's Isn't insane, it? yeah. Like I think the the last the last game on the MVS is Samurai Showdown Five Special, which comes in two thousand and four. I think maybe March two thousand and four. But yeah, literally, this is one of the last games to be released on on that platform. And yeah, oh. I mean, it's ridiculous when you think about it. When when the when the MVS and the AS were released, and when it finished, I mean, it still holds the record today. Um, the AS as the longest running console it even beats the the playstation 2 um yeah, so yeah it was yeah. really late in the day so I, anyway i'm really chuffed to have got that in terms of the dreamcast i'm out of my replay of shemu one and i'm on to two so at the moment oh, wow. i'm excellent. Mooching, <laughs> I, yeah excellent I, i've really got ahead on that i'm mooching around in the docks buying lighters <laughs> <laughs> because, <laughs> because because uh, this, this is interesting <laughs> no 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 no, 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 no through um, interesting fact, I think I bored Tom with this, but I can bore people on the pod as well. Nice. <laughs> Buy the lighters at the docks in Shenmue 2, because you can sell them at the pawn shop for a load of cash. Oh. There you go. Also, for Shenmue 2. Also, this is probably more well known, the figures you can get out of the little the figure machines, if you can get full sets of them, you can also sell those in the pawn shops in the second game for a lot of money. So... Life imitates <laughs> art. <laughs> <laughs> it really does. Do you know, like those guys who collect all the amiibos, and it's like I got the full amiibo set, and they sell them for like ten thousand pounds. It's just like that in Shenmue. Do the same. Thing. <laughs> yeah, I, found a, uh, I, found, I found a Skylanders bag uh, for a dollar, and uh, that's going to probably sell yeah. on eBay for like twenty at least. So, at least, yeah, it's yeah. interesting. No problem. Um, I've got quite a few things to talk about, which I've picked up and actually been given to me as well. Um, Ooh, yeah. The first thing I wanted to talk about is. Um, Last weekend, or the weekend before, me and Rob went down to the uh, UK Podcast Awards, uh, which we were nominated for. We didn't win. Uh, the winners were the Asylum. 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 Yeah. So, you know, congratulations to them. Um, it was a really good night. We had a lot of fun, didn't we, Rob? Yeah, um, totally. One of our previous writers here at The Yard, um, a guy who was known as Father Krishna or Father K, came to meet us, and he brought me a present which was a lime green, semi-translucent Dreamcast. I was quite blown away by that. He just kind of handed it to me, and uh, I was like, what? And he's like, you can have it. I was like, wow, thank you so much. Uh, um, he's such he's such a good guy. He, is, he yeah. ended up giving me, like, I, my copy of Shenmue 2 came from him. Yeah, I remember you And saying, I, st- yeah. I still don't think, I gave him some stuff sort of in return, but I still don't think that, so, I mean, boy, what a great guy. Yeah, yeah. In fact, my copy of Confidential Mission, the first time I met him about 10 years ago, he gave me that. So <laughs> that's now two things that he's given me, and I'm not actually giving him anything in return, so I need to rectify that soon. I think there's um, a lap dance impending, isn't it? Yeah, um, <laughs> if, if you are listening to this, Simon, uh, lap dance is uh, is on me next time we, uh, we cross paths. <laughs> um, <laughs> um, I put the pictures up on the Facebook page, and a guy called Martin, who is a quite active member of the group and page, asked me if I wanted the... Uh, translucent base so i could uh, you know modify it and, and make it match the joypad um, and i was like yes please and he sent me a, a translucent bottom half of a dreamcast case and uh, so now I've, yeah it, look, it looks fantastic with the um you know the two-tone gel and he also sent me a, a green rumble pack to go with it so i've got the green rumble pack and the green vmu well, talking about rumble packs, I've, there's a, I've seen uh, a one recently that was on for sale by a guy. Uh, I don't know if you know him. It's Steve, Steve Bailey. He lives in Japan and, and deals on Facebook, etc. He, he's got a, a, a Godzilla edition green VMU Dreamcast for sale at the moment. It's really pricey, though. I don't know how rare they are. It might be something to look into. I think a lot of those Jap- uh, Japanese exclusive Dreamcasts can go mm. for a pretty penny, can't they? I mean, just for this VMU, he's asking... Over fifty quid. So. Wow! Yeah, yeah. Man, I I almost bid on the Hello Kitty uh, Dreamcast for you. <laughs> yeah. But I was like, oh you know, <laughs> no, I can't do it. I can't do it. I... <laughs> and, yeah, and he, he sells stuff like obviously reduced price as well. So God knows how much they really go for. Yeah, yeah. Um, apart from that, um, again, I'm thankful for to those two guys for for basically giving me that stuff. Um, I managed to pick up um, Alien Front Online, completely fully boxed with the oh, yeah, um, I saw that. That was the microphone. Wasn't it? Yeah, fantastic condition. Nice. Yeah. Hey, uh, as, as far as you can see, the microphone on that, that's pretty much the exact same thing as the Seaman microphone, right? Yeah, that's right. And the um, uh, Planet Ring microphone, it's exactly the same. So it's the same thing. Um, the only one that I've seen that's slightly different in design or colour is the one that comes with the Dream Eye. It's actually blue rather than grey. Yeah, so... Uh, 
yeah, there's, there's, I got that at Alien Front Online, and also Marvel vs. Capcom, the Japanese version, which again I paid a minimal price for. It was less than five pounds. So uh, you know, it was it, it's just all about flagons on like on eBay things, and you don't have to spend a lot of money. Really, don't. It's been a good uh, couple of weeks for me on the uh, the old collecting front. Um, Lovely. Yeah. Uh, anyway, guys, um, thanks for sharing that with us, uh, with me, uh, what you've uh, been picking up and playing. Um, I think we should dive into the uh, the first bit of news that we've got, and that is that uh, the uh, the team at uh, is it Easnet? Is that how you pronounce it? E-Net, yeah, it's, it's just Y-S, isn't it? Yeah, right. yeah. Um, Y-S-Net, E-S-Net, I don't know how you pronounce E-S-Net. it, but um, yeah, I'll go with E-S-Net. <coughs> uh, they've announced a, uh, an, an extension to the uh, Shenmue 3 uh, Kickstarter where you can actually you know, add more funds to the, uh, to the, to the pot, <laughs> and it's known as the Amazing. Slacker Backer. Um, <laughs> I don't know if, what you guys... I mean, I think we've all... Didn't we all actually put into the Kickstarter when it was running originally? I know I did. Uh, and, and, yeah. yeah, totally. I'm oh, sorry, I, I didn't, folks, but that's because I didn't really, not really bother about Shenmue in the first place. But it's not to say it's not going to be a great game. Now's your chance, guys, getting the slack. You, you are a slacker, yeah. and now you can back it. Yeah, exactly, yeah. Well, that's <laughs> the thing, though. We've got all this, I mean, it's, what was it? It was the most, one of the most backed bloody uh, ideas or, or projects, fun yeah. projects on, on Kickstarter, and it, it far way beyond exceeded its goal, and now they're asking for more money. Yes, yeah. I, I think it's stu- stupid. But then again, you'll get you'll get people who who will want to give more money. I don't know why though. I think Suzuki actually just wants to get all the money and then sort of like Scrooge McDuck, yeah, buy an money island bin style, <laughs> just buy a cave like like Smaug out of Lord of the Rings and, uh, <laughs> and just just live in a cave on a big pile of gold. Yeah, he had like that money bank, didn't he? Stuffed with coins, and he'd dive in somehow. Into, into the coins. I think even with even with like six million dollars and and like even however many hundred thousand dollars of this the slacker backer gets, I don't think he'll still be uh, jumping into a money bin because uh, it's going to yeah, cost you know, I mean, it, tens of millions to make a game that you know this scope. So everybody's been talking about this is being funded, you know, mostly I believe by Sony. So you know, all this Kickstarter money, I think, is just you know them, you know. Judging interest at this point. Now I know with the uh, when the big Reaper Kickstarter happened and they had the little thing, I missed out on that Kickstarter, the Reaper miniature mm-hmm. one. And then when they had their uh, version of this slacker backer, people were pissed because they were like, you know, I spent all this money to get like all this good stuff, and then some dude who didn't even bother helping out the Kickstarter when it was new, then then this dude just comes in and he's going to get the same like amount of stuff that I'm going to get. Like, that's not fair. Has that happened in this case? I, I, I would imagine it probably has, to be honest. Um, Rob, See, I'm sorry. looking at, I'm looking at the, the, the backing page now on for this Shimmery 3. Now, the, the total amount pledged, does that include the original original Kickstarter? Yeah. yeah that it does. does. Yeah. I was going to say, but they, they've earned a lot of money there. But yeah, I mean, it's, it's, it's exceeding $6 million at this point. And then this, this, obviously, this extra campaign is going on for another 102 days. So, yeah, yeah. If you look at the actual sort of like the stretch goals that they're still stretching towards, mm. it's essentially just expanding some areas in the game in terms of their content and size, and also yeah. the battle system getting expanded. Yeah, and, yeah. yeah, yeah. And, and let's not forget, guys, you look at those millions and millions of dollars, and you've got to realize Corey Marshall is going to take up so much of that money, it's not even funny. <laughs> <laughs> they're. They, they're driving dump trucks to his house, full of full of you know just bundled, uh, non sequential bills, and he's just you know he you know that's he's in demand, so I don't blame him. For yes, it. That, that's that's friend of the junkyard, Corey Marshall. Uh, yeah. Friend of the junkyard, indeed. Yeah, <laughs> um, guys. Uh, moving on, still sticking with the the Kickstarter thing. There's been two more Dreamcast related Kickstarters announced. Uh, the first one is a uh, Alice Dreams Tournament, which is a kind of a Bomberman type game. With a full VMU support, which looks pretty cool. Uh, Caleb, you you were the one who put the um, the story up on the junkyard. Um, what, what do you think? Yeah, yeah, I've been fo- I've been following this game since this game was like a bonus game, and like they originally wanted to do sort of like an adventure style game. So the original Alice Dreams game had this like really really amazing demo for the Dreamcast, where it was like kind of like a Monkey Island game mixed in with like all sorts of like little other kind of gameplay bits. And this mode was kind of like a Bomberman-style game, which was just a bonus game mm. that you could unlock by playing the demo. 
And now it's now it's become something much much more complicated than that, and I'm really excited, especially because of the VMU support and uh, all the little modes and stuff. It looks it looks like they really understand that a lot of people still play Bomberman. And this is this. I like yeah. the way that you can use the VMU, like you just mentioned, as a as a kind of a map, and you can see kind of who who is where on the in, in the yeah. level. It's kind of like a radar because the screen will like the screen will go. Black. Blank because of like mm. sand or snow or darkness, and then you have to use the VMU tactically, which is amazing. And not many games do. Yeah, that certainly not. Um, well, I'm gonna say homebrew, but more like indie games. You know, like like this. Yeah. Well, I can only think of like that one Zelda four-player <laughs> game. Maybe a couple other ones where they have the they have the technology there to actually look at a second screen. I know that the uh, I know that the Wii. Uh, the Wii U was supposed to be big on that, but I actually don't know of any games that actually have that function. But this this looks like it'll be an amazing game for a tournament or a retro game uh, event or something like that. So I'm yeah, yeah, certainly, certainly in four player mode. Um, the other one that that's come to light recently is um, a game called uh, Saber Rider, and um, this is a it's Saber Rider and the Star Sheriffs, which is based on a it's an American cartoon series, which is in turn based on a Japanese cartoon series from the eighties. And um, there's not really a lot of information about it on the Kickstarter page, but from all in- from from the information that's on there, it looks like it's going to be a, a kind of a 2D side-on run and gun, sort of in the same style as a uh, Gunstar Heroes. Um, now, originally the Dreamcast version was actually just uh, like a, a stretch goal, but because of people emailing the developers and, and asking mm-hmm. for a Dreamcast version, they've kind of caved in and said, right, from the off, this is is now a, a level that you can play yeah, towards. Yeah, I mean, because this game is looks like it's been touted for quite a few different platforms. Yeah, yeah. Uh, mm-hmm. Yeah, so, I mean, for, for us, getting it on the Dreamcast would be a huge bonus. I mean, it looks, the cartoon looks fantastic. I mean, I grew up in the 80s, and I was always watching cartoons like uh, uh, Battle of the Planets and things like that. It looks like it's kind of in the same vein. Yeah, no, Brave Star. Yeah, Brave Star. See, there's a guy on a horse here on the, on the Kickstarter page. It looks brilliant. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I mean, if, if if it's anything like Gunstar here, we can expect a very good game. Yeah, it is. I mean, it is planned for both the. It, initially, it was a 3DS and a um, a PC game, and now they've added uh, Dreamcast support and a Dreamcast version. It's a fully boxed game as well. You know, it's a physical thing, uh, and also one of the um, one of the higher. Uh, sort of pledge prizes or whatever you want to call them is a um it's like a double disc with a, a music music disc mm. and, a, and all this kind of thing so it, it looks looks quite promising um obviously there's no actual footage of the game as of yet but uh, it, you know i wait with bated breath to see see what happens and um, that one has been fun it's not fully funded yet time of uh, time of recording but well on the way they've they've got over sort of 50 percent. so hopefully that will be another game yeah well that's it i mean there's plenty of time left um they were asking for 75 grand but obviously if they reach 200 grand um from what i can see they're going to release it onto the uh xbox one and ps4 so uh it'll appeal to uh slightly younger gamers as well yeah, we've got quite a lot of stuff to look forward to with the uh, the Dreamcast upcoming uh, indie games. You know, we've got Leaves in Shadows and um, uh, High Potential, and now these things are coming as well. It's so always cool. nice, isn't it, to see that a console uh, is still popular and it's and people are still making games for it. One thing I wanted to mention as well on the on the subject of these kind of indie games, um, Elysian Shadows team are actually. Um, I just wanted to sort of pimp this and give it a bit of a shout out because they're actually hosting a um, like a Kickstarter backers party, which looks like it's going to be at just, just a house party with the guys from Elysian Shadows, where everyone's just going to get absolutely hammered and talk about <laughs> games. And I wish <laughs> that I lived nearby and could go to it because it looks fantastic. But um, if you're not familiar with that, go to the Elysian Shadows team Facebook page and it's all all over there. So I just wanted to give that a shout out as well. Shall we, uh, shall we move on to our main discussion of this this episode? Let's do it. Right then, uh, as we, we all know, the Dreamcast is, uh, 15, is it 15 or 16 years old this year. Um, is it 2000? Was it, yeah, yeah, must 16, be 16, yeah, 16 now, years, it? yeah. Well, well yeah. from the Japanese launch. Um, and uh, I was thinking earlier on, I was you know looking at my collection, I thought, you know, there's, there's not really been that many consoles that launched with so many games, you know, and I was... Just looking at my collection and thought pretty much all of the launch games, certainly the um, the European ones, the PAL ones. And uh, so I kind of had a quick look at um, Wikipedia, as you do, looked through all the different launch titles there, and I thought, I don't really play them very often. So I got Expendable out of my collection and, and put that in, and I spent a good sort of hour playing Expendable Millennium Soldier. And I just thought, 
it would be interesting to speak about how these games still stand up today. Uh, things like Aero Wings um, and, uh, you know, Expendable, for example. And uh, just looking at the list now of different, obviously in, uh, in the US and Europe, different games are released. Uh, the Japanese launch had uh, Godzilla Generations, July, Pen Pen and Virtual Fighter 3. Uh, the US launch, this is quite a long list, I'll just quickly blaze through them. You had Aero Wings, Air Force Delta, Blue Stinger, Factor Flag, Expendable, House of the Dead 2, Hydro Thunder, Monaco Grand Prix, Mortal Kombat Gold, NFL 2K, NFL Blitz 2000, Pen Pen, Power Stone, Ready to Rumble, Sonic Adventure, Soul Calibur, TN Motorsports Hardcore Heat, uh, which is Buggy Heat in the UK, Tokyo Extreme Racer and Trick Style. And then in the UK, we had Blue Stinger, Dynamite Cop, Expendable, Incoming, Pen Pen, Sega Rally 2, Sega Bath Fishing, Sonic Adventure, Toy Commander and Virtual Fighter 3. Now, that's quite a big list, depending on you know where you were based. Um, what do you think? I mean, have you guys played any of these recently? Some- I, mean, they're big. I mean, especially going from the European, they're, they're big Sega titles like your Virtual Fighter, your Sega Rally, Sonic. Big, big Sega titles, aren't they, that have been proven successful? Now, I remember these games, and, you know, there's games that we still play. You know, obviously, American release was amazingly strong, you know. I, you know, because I do tournaments and stuff, uh, you know, there's, I still play a lot of, uh, you know, Soul Calibur, the original, and, you know, in, you know, House of the Dead 2, for some reason, that's one game that I keep on picking up every once in a while. Uh, And I even just got a big old CRT monitor. (laughs) A long story short, somebody from the from the local police station, <laughs> I talked to them, and they were throwing out this gigantically huge CRT monitor. So I have I have the perfect platform for House of the Dead two now. Awesome. Uh, but yeah, one of the other big ones that was like the big promotional thing was the uh, Ready to Rumble boxing. That was that oh, was like man, the big yeah. that was a big push right mm. at the at the start. I, I, I thought that was a, a European release as well, but obviously a launch release. I suppose it's not on the European launch list because I thought that was one of the very early games in Europe. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I'm, I'm literally looking at the, uh, the I'm looking at the Wikipedia page, so it might be incorrect. I think the thing is, though, isn't it that we're now used to these launch windows, which the, they've brought in to sort of screw over the the consumer essentially but launch games used to be launch games like unless you could get it on day one it wasn't a launch game so i think a lot of these times like you say we're ready to rumble boxing i remember that as well and i swear that that was a a a uk launch title but i bet it wasn't i bet it was it could have been just a week later or a month later or something and it wouldn't have counted yeah, I mean, because I'm looking at the US launch list, and there's a lot of games on there that we 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 never got, you know. So, so, so certainly the NFL uh, 2K, um, but then there's other games that. Um, well, you guys would be confused because they're like, why why aren't they calling foul? They're using their hands way too much. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Thing is, as well, I mean, this is the Japanese launch was over a year before the um, the US launch, so it, it obviously gave them a lot longer to get games ready. Um, things that kind of. Um, not stunned me, but made me think. Uh, things like Soul Calibur was a launch title in the US, but I can remember waiting for it to come out in the UK. So it was already out in, in America, but we had to wait like sort of much longer for it to come here. Um, just going back to the game I was playing uh, today and, and yesterday, Expendable. It's one of them games that kind of gets forgetting, uh, forgotten about. Um, and it was just the fact that I was tidying up in my games room because it's an absolute tip, and I, and I picked the box up and I was like, I played this for ages. Like, I'll, I'm gonna, I'm gonna have a go because I mean, even back in the day, I never got past. I never played it past maybe like level two. So I was like, right, I'm gonna sit down and I'm gonna play this. And I played it for a good hour, and it's it's actually lots of fun. You know, it's it's so outrageous. There's so much going on on screen. There's so many different enemies and all these lighting effects and explosions and you know, there's loads of different effects like um, uh, terrain warping and things like that. And you just it never really gets a look in as a uh, like a, a classic inverted commas Dreamcast game. I know it was a port from a PC game, but um, it's 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 so good, it's so enjoyable, just as a a mindless shooter, a mindless top down shooter. And even in in parts, it turns into a sort of a third person shoot 'em up where the camera kind of goes behind the character. So then you're kind of roaming around in this yeah. like uh, Gears of War esque style view, you know. And uh, I think it's an I think it's an unsung hero, really, the Dreamcast launch, especially in 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 the PAL territories. I agree. I, I think I spoke about this a bit before, so, so quite a few pods back. But I think it's an absolute. If you compare it to other launches in terms of launch games, I'm not talking about whether or not they all stand up today. 
Or uh, they, they they certainly all don't stand up today. But in terms of a, a launch, you know, like selection of games, I think it, for me personally, it's one of the best in terms of all consoles. Mm. In terms of that launch day, specifically if you take that US launch as like the official one, you know what I mean? Obviously, you, you can't take the Japanese one with its four games. And half of those four games, maybe two are any good mm. and the rest were just bloody awful. But yeah, I mean, goddamn, there's. The, it was an amazingly varied launch. There's so many different titles and so many different genres. There's really something for everybody. Just moving on from that, if you were to ask me what I still play now and what I think really do sta- what really does stand up, I still play Virtua Fighter. You know, obviously Rally. We've discussed that. Dynamite Cop, great. Ready to Rumble Boxing, great. Soul Calibur, Sonic Adventure. The, I mean, yeah, I mean, Aero Wings, maybe. You, you know, like. House of the Dead 2, quality titles. And yeah, over the past couple of years, I've played them all. And I still get just as much fun today than I did but back then. Yes, they don't look as good, but the fundamental mechanics remain really fun. Yeah, I think the oddball out of, out of this lot is um, probably Pen Pen, because that doesn't really get a lot of love. Um, a lack of love, in fact. <laughs> <laughs> don't go down the lack of love, man. <laughs> Pen pen, I don't know. Pen pen, it, uh. yeah, yeah, and and one of the one of the end of level bosses is uh, extremely offensive. It's kind to, of a uh, niche game, isn't it, really. <laughs> to large parts of the, <laughs> of the world. <laughs> we'll say no yeah. more about that. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I just I just wanted to kind of bring up the uh, the maybe not not very well recognised uh, expendable in in the uh, it was lost in the crowd during the the launch period for the Dreamcast. One thing I wanted to say to those people listening is that we are quite pressed for time on this episode because we've not got that much time left on our server. So this episode will be a lot shorter than the yeah, than, than, than other ones. But um, I think we've um, we've we've covered that uh, topic quite well. Um, the uh, the next thing I wanted to just briefly touch on is this. Um, there's a, there's a little event going on in Japan at the moment, or it, it's just happened. It's called the uh, Tokyo Game Show. And uh, <laughs> you, you may you may have heard of it. Yeah, you, you might have heard of it. It's a little event, very little. Yeah, yeah. Um, and there's one thing that interest, interested me that is on display is a uh, a range of shoes, a range of footwear for the uh, for the discerning Sega fan, uh, created by a company called I think it's pronounced A Nippon or A Nippon. Yeah, um, they have created a a, a a range of footwear based on Sega different Sega consoles. So you've got a, a a Mega Drive, a, a Saturn, and a, and a Dreamcast um, style. Have you guys seen these? I'm sure you have. Yeah, totally. They were they were going to come out with uh, the uh, the Mega CD or Sega yeah. CD, but yeah, the shoes were not breaking <laughs> after somebody put their foot in them. Shots fired. <laughs> um, I, I mean, I think they look pretty cool. I mean, there's, there's there's very little chance that we'll be able to find them in this country, but I don't know. But you, Caleb, you might be able to get some over there in the US and you could maybe do a little moonwalk down the street in your Dreamcast shoes. Oh, yes, great, <laughs> you know. There's nothing like a grown man wearing shoes like that. That'd be great. <laughs> it's more of a collector's item. I'll, I'll tell you one thing. Uh, these shoes, it's like, I don't understand, you know. It, I think there was a phone call and there was some bad reception. And somebody was saying, like, oh, you know what they really want? They want the Dreamcast 2. <laughs> And then somebody misheard them and said, they want Dreamcast shoes? <laughs> so, uh, okay, I guess. If they want shoes, we can give them shoes. Look, so, yeah. <laughs> Tom, you say, like, there's very little chance of seeing them over here. But now, you know, now that the Dream Pod and the Dreamcast Junkyard is based out of Shoreditch, I think <laughs> we'll actually see quite a lot of people, including all members of the Dream Pod, wearing these very shortly. <laughs> with, that, with that beards and moustaches and yeah, <laughs> shaved, <laughs> shaved sides. <laughs> Comovers <laughs> and dungarees, yeah. Being yeah. the hipsters that we are. Um, <laughs> so, yeah, seriously though, I, I'd take a pair. Like, if I could, like, legitimately, like, buy them for a half decent price without paying some rid- redonkulous like import <laughs> fee, then yeah, maybe because they are quite, quite cool actually. Yeah, I mean, I don't, I don't know. Like, from a serious, just, just being like the cynical devil's advocate, you know, um, is this just like cashing in on retro gaming? Yes, like, yes. Of course it is. <laughs> but is and, and, and are we cool with this? Are we cool with this yes, level of cashing in? Of course. <laughs> I don't know. No, um, I love the box. I'd, the box looks looking like at the, the, the styles, box, I think the Dreamcast one is a standout one, isn't it, I think? Yeah. 
Yeah, and the the the, the satin ones as well, the, the box. I don't like the style of satin you know, shoes. You know, I actually got a cool. pair of Splatterhouse shoes, and they're actually like really good shoes. But again, I I just couldn't. I kind of kept them just as a collector's item, just because I couldn't. I couldn't justify yeah, I think wearing if, them. If I had some of these, as a grown I would man, definitely you know? keep them in the box in in my mm. like game room on the shelf or something. I couldn't wear them out in public. A because people would laugh at me, and B because I didn't want to get them like dirty. Yeah. So j- j- just just quickly, like if people are interested, like I I'm, I have seen pictures. I haven't read any actual like information about them. Like, are these going to go on sale at least in Japan in bulk in like mass numbers? Uh, couldn't say. I mean, all the pages that I've seen are basically pointers to the um, to the Japanese store. Uh, it, even my article on Junkyard is basically just giving links to the uh, TGS website. I think they're just showing them at TGS and you can buy them at the event, but there's no real facility to buy them and get them shipped to, you know... Uh, there is a website that's uh, A-N-N-I, so there, there is a website, if you just mm-hmm. Google search it, that apparently... It, it, it's in Japanese, so unfortunately, I, I, I it's, it looks like a site where you can buy them, and they have a big number in yen, so I'm assuming... I'm assuming it's a site where you can buy them. I don't know. Interesting. We shall see. And I have no idea. I have no idea from the site if it looks like I'm. I'm pretty sure this site does not do international mm. shipping. So no, uh, don't know. Inconclusive. If we get in, any further information, we shall uh, convey it to uh, to you, the listener. Ah, wait. Sorry, Tom. I'm literally do literally looking at it right now. Funstock.co.uk say they're going to get some in soon. Not wanting to pimp them specifically, but they say the price will be around forty pounds. Oh, that's sixty-two stock, yeah. American yeah, they're dollars. Popular. Mm. Uh, so yeah, maybe keep tabs on them if you fancy a pair of Sega shoes. That's fun stock, yeah. Oh, oh, oh! I, ju- I just saw a link. They do have a link for a special service for international shipping, which will. It, it looks like it's pretty expensive, though. So, uh, yeah, you might be better off seeing if somebody's gonna do like a, a online release through an English site, Blay. Okay, guys, uh, I'm I'm very kind of um, I'm look at this looking at the time, so uh, I think we need to wrap this one up here. Unfortunately, we do. Um, yeah, but yeah, as ever, it's um, been a pleasure. Uh, speaking to you guys, and uh, thank you to to you listening. Um, uh, if you like what you hear, then please go on to uh, iTunes and, and give us a, uh, a five star rating, or if yeah, even even a one star rating if you if you think it's horrendous. Please, uh, anything. <laughs> give us a tick or a vote, or yeah, yeah. I think we're at. Um, we've got. I think we've got like fourteen reviews now on on the UK iTunes store, and I think we've got about seven or eight on the US one, which I only randomly looked at the other day to start of interest, and I didn't even realize people were, uh, were, were you know, listening in the US, so thank you to you guys over there, and thanks to everybody else. Yeah, yeah cool. I've been promoting okay. it. I got all, all, I got all seven of my <laughs> friends to help promote it. Um, okay, uh, so um, Rob, you are on Twitter at R. Nicholas J. And Gaz, you're on Twitter at Lost Ruin. And Caleb, you're on Twitter. I am on Twitter. Yep. Yes. I'm on Twitter at Tom Lisi, and we are on Twitter collectively at Sega Junkyard. Uh, as ever, you can find us on Facebook. It's facebook.com forward slash Dreamcast Junkyard. We also have a group, and we have a main website, which is www.thedreamcastjunkyard.co.uk. And, uh, yeah, if you like what you hear, give us a, a review. And uh, that's that's us for this uh, this episode, unfortunately. Thanks for listening. Wait a minute there, Tom. Oh, yeah. I was told that I was good. No, wait a second here. Why are you Why are you stopping the podcast early? You told me I was going to have a full 20-minute segment. We've only got 35 minutes. Wait, wait, wait a second. <laughs> this is all. You're part of the conspiracy. Please stop this disc now. Now, 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 now.